Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. So I do get a lot of comments with people saying I have saved them a lot of money, and I do get questions, hey, can I send you some money somehow? And now there is a way, if you so choose, called the Fan Funding. You'll find it on the channel page right there. So we're inside a 5 of 2003 Ford Explorer doing the right side passenger side temperature blend door actuator right here <clears throat> it says it's about uh, six hours to do pull the dash and replace this part which is down in here this is actually where we're taking it out right down in here and the real problem is the stupid actuator you can see a little silver bar down there vacuum operated actuator will not really come out where it's supposed to come out unless you uh, pull the dash but we are able to do this without removing the dash but the most important part is probably a seven millimeter swivel socket and extension to get to the hard to reach bolts at a quite not straight angle what might help you here is maybe make a little bit of a notch in here. I did a little bit, pretty harmless. You could probably go more extreme on your own vehicle to get in here to get one or two of the screws in here. So we're gonna drop the new part in this hole. drop down there first and so we'll spin it into place down there and fit it into its notch <clears throat> so in the middle of the shot you can kind of see the hole that the uh, unit needs to go into so it is a matter of finagling it into the uh, hole twisting it and getting it right I'm going to have to put down the camera, but uh, that's the hole where the uh, motor goes into. Taking the shot from right here on the passenger side, you can kind of see in there, so that's where I'm working. So I'm not actually sure how well you can see anything. I really can't seem to get a good lighting on it, but you do need to have this turned all the way uh, clockwise as far as it'll go to get it to insert into the uh, door notch I was trying to turn the uh, door itself inside with a screwdriver to make it easier to install the uh, motor assembly but it wouldn't stay rotated it always wanted to stay rotated to the right so but I was able to get it in and out as it is in this spot so it's going to be I guess I'd call it your choice if you want to fight with this, but I think you can save yourself time. There's one of the screw holes you can see. You can get to all of them. I think it was actually easier right through here to get this screw right here. That's one of the three screws, seven millimeter right here. So it's in, I'm gonna start installing the screws. Here's my P key piece of equipment. I think it's a, oh, I might say eight on there. Swivel, built-in swivel and an extension. And 
we can just get her done here. Let's use our swivel and uh, extension and uh, put that screw in. And we'll have two more to go. Here's a shot of my eight millimeter wrench I'm using on the bolt in the front. And probably if you use a, maybe a gear wrench, a ratchet wrench, it'll go even a little faster, but there's the access for the bolt in the front. So here's the secret for this uh, one screw though is to put some paper or something to jam something in here so it stays on your socket unless you have magnetic sockets which probably works well too but got some paper jammed in here so that it doesn't fall out and I can uh, thread it right through here right in here and get to where I need to go Gonna be right there somewhere. If it's gonna show up on camera, I'll show you the bolt. But there's the access for the lower right bolt right through there. I talked about etching that out a little bit more, cutting it out a little bit more to get better access. Really trying to do minimum on this one here. So there's a shot of the little bolt kind of in the middle of the frame there in between those two bars. That's what you're going for. And you can get it through that groove. Just put your socket up here. Extension with a swivel and slide it down in this spot here and you can get it. So all three bolts are now in place and here's my plug-in. Tucked it up here out of the way. It has a little push pin here. I found this pretty easy to access through this hole right here actually. Just use a screwdriver and push on it. And then pulled with my hands over on this side right here. So let's see if I can get it in here. So once we've installed our motor, we can drop this back into place and bolt it into place. It's gonna fit in here pretty nice somewhere. Boom. Bolt hole there. bolt hole there. Two bolts hold it in place. Let's plug our connector in for the motor. So there's the plug-in there in the middle and you can see the tank sticking right out there for you. Pretty easy to get to right between the metal bar. Let's zoom out a little bit. So we're just again looking through here. Just reach down there with the screwdriver, push on the button, and reach from below, and uh, you should be able to unplug it pretty easily right there. Next, uh, there's this metal shield. Not sure why it's here. Fits in a groove and on a notch. And it has one bolt up here holding it in place. right there so we'll put that bolt in and again you can kind of get to it right through here making real good use of our eight millimeter wobbly put that screw in Again, paper's my friend, holding the screw in place until it's tightened up.
and that is how I'm getting to most of the tight fitting spots bolts right there I pulled this out of its little spot there just for a little hand room also I disconnected this just a couple little tangs on here to disconnect and pull through this piece goes along with this you can see they match up so it's put back together I don't know that it was hooked up on anything like it could be hooked on something but I don't know that it was hooked up when I got in here so and we can uh, snap this back into place that's where that was at so I think that's most everything in here oh got a blue hose right up here to hook up to the back for the vacuum Got our blue vacuum hose hooked up. To the back of the uh, vacuum operated device there, the silver thing, shiny. You can perhaps disconnect or connect as much stuff as you need to. I think this is maybe a glove box connector. I believe, not 100% on that. So that's it. And then we got our uh, 13 millimeter bolts over here. A 13 millimeter bolt here. 10 millimeter bolt here. And of course some other things. We'll start putting it back together. The three connectors in here. Push the little tab right here down. Same with these tabs here, tab here, tab here, that's the release tab. Goes on the back of this, just friction fits. No bolts holding this in place. I did take a duct out actually right down here I believe goes here for maybe a little more easy hand access right here screw here and a screw in the back so I'll show you that We'll bolt that back in. So we've got the little friction fits and some guidance pins too here as well for the holes. And there's one connector over here, same thing with the tab. So we can just put this in place, I believe. Around the steering wheel. Shifter there. Push it into place. There it is, and you can just use a, a small screwdriver and pry around the bottom here and pry start working it out, and then uh, pull it out as needed to get to 
all your connectors and get it out. And also friction fits and holes here for this panel here. Ooh. Just a bunch of friction fits, one connector in the middle. And again, same thing, a tab to push on there to release it. <clears throat> we'll put our 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter bolt in up there. It's got these little angled feet too. Slide into these slots. Be aware of that all along the edge there. So, put it in a hole. Basically, all the way down. I'll just snap it down into place. Just like so, all the way across. And again, maybe just use a small screwdriver or plastic uh, pry bar. Pry up on this to pop it out. Just friction fits. <clears throat> and I would suppose uh, you can actually try it. You don't have to do that, maybe. I don't know how much the dash actually have to, has to move for it to come out this way. That was the first time for me to try it, so I was taking maybe more apart than I needed to. So, get to work underneath here. Take this side shield off, like I did, two 13 millimeter bolts here, 10 millimeter bolt bracket here, that's probably pretty important though, I think, for getting the dash to move at all, which I think it did need to move a little bit. <clears throat> Here's an example of the bracket on the side here, two studs here, and then uh, up there, two 10 millimeter bolts. So bracket here, and 13 millimeter bolts here. That might be all you need. There's also an identical bracket like that on the other side that you could maybe undo. And of course, we'll get to the center console. All right, for the center console here, we got two screws here in the front, some guide pins, a couple push pins actually on the side that just unscrew. There's plastic like this. Two screws that go down in here, one here, and probably one over there. And then uh, put your seats all the way forward. You can get to do two screws here that come in from the side. And uh, plug-ins, I don't need that one, but you might need to undo that. And then we have uh, plug-ins here, and they're just, again, push tabs to release. So they're push tabs. So we'll do that. And then uh, actually one friction fit here that goes onto the center console. So we'll drop that uh, into place here. And we'll pull this wiring harness up out of here because it's not in the right spot of course this will be uh, probably in this hole here we'll slide it forward Tabs line up right there. Push pin in. Just 
just like that. And check our bolt holes, yep. Looking good there. So we can drop our bolts into place. Eight millimeter bolts, we'll just do one, two, and uh, three and four down here. And uh, bolt this down. These can pretty much be pushed into place, I believe. Gonna fit in a slot. Just like that. You probably just pull it out by maybe pulling on this a little bit, like that. Boom. So we'll screw this in. And there's a screw here to hold the uh, other piece in place here. We'll get to that next. A couple friction fits here. Plug in. Ooh. Friction fits. Friction fits. Just gonna snap into place. We gotta plug this in here. Out two Phillips screws. So gotta hook up the electrical connector for this and for this. Silver screw, gold screw. Install the two Phillips screws in there and you'd be good to go here. Got your little insert covers here, they didn't really need to come out there. Cigarette thingamajigger just goes drops in there so good to go there put the two screws in on the back that I showed you before and that'll be installed so this kind of just slides onto the uh, groove onto the metal edge here so we can just take that off <clears throat> got this piece here Snaps into place, a little screwdriver, and pop this out. And push this into place. We've got this piece here we took off too. Friction fits. The guide pin. Snaps into place. That's pretty much it. Push this down in place. Snap our trim piece in pin, uh, snap our trim piece into place.
these may or may not come off on the piece, trim piece. It's got a circular guide hole up here too. it there. Install that. Three screws here for the glove box. Got our temperature on 90. The vehicle's running. We change this down here. Seems to be moving. It's not making a click, 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 click noise. So that should be good. So three screws for the glove box. Edges in on both sides. So we'll make sure everything's working. Mm-hmm. 